So today we're going to get ready to press 400 pounds of apple cider. This is a disassembled Wallace Kokorin double barrel apple press built in Portland, Oregon, probably about 150 years ago. So today we're going to talk about apple presses a little bit, uh, about um, the workflow, how to set things up. And this is going to be kind of a learning experience for me as well. This is our fifth season of pressing apples, and I have never had a good system that was very efficient. It ended in a lot of kind of frustration, a lot of spilled apple cider, a lot of just issues. This year, I plan on getting it right. So the way I got things, we'll talk about that, but look, we'll talk about the apple press here a little bit, because I know a lot of you have not seen anything like this before. Now, the original one, as I said in the previous video, all of the wood that had been rotted away, and I rebuilt all of this using Douglas fir. The original one was made out of maple, uh, but the arch and everything, you can really see it in its broke down or, or kind of disassembled form. So this is really cool right here. So this is the, it's, a, it's the pulverizer. So this is a series of stacked pieces of hard wood. This is original, I, di I didn't have to rebuild this, it was still intact, with the, the teeth on it, and the teeth are what pulverize the apples. One of the features that makes this re really useful uh, and easy to use is this heavy flywheel. And I'll tell you what, it is very heavy. The purpose of a flywheel, whether it's on a steam engine or cars or, or just anything, they still use commonly in most all machinery, is it's a, once you, once you get a, a bunch of weight going, you have the spinning weight going, the mass of that flywheel will carry it through. So as you get it spinning and, and you drop apples into it, that will help you keep it going. And so having a heavy flywheel is so important when you're grinding a lot of apples. I've seen lesser mills that don't have them, and it makes for a lot of work uh, for the user a lot more. And then of course you can see here the simple gear reduction right here in the handle. This is the original handle. Uh, the wood was even still good on it. I had to replace the cotter pin. But you can really see how all of this works to pulverize the apples. The frame uh, was all, these, this is all the original hardware. I was able to recover it, the threaded rods, and re, I rebuilt it as close as I could to the original. Um, of course, using a different wood. I just, I didn't have any maple. Here are the original tabs in the locks that will lock the upper section on. And of course, this really big, heavy arch, a screw arch. So the reason why I took it apart is uh, I want to give it a real quick, quick cleaning and I wanted to show you kind of how the whole thing works and then we'll put it all together. Here are the rest of the components. We've got uh, the barrels. Uh, these are made out of oak staves here. I built these from the original rings. Here is the solid maple press plate right there. I had to rebuild all of that and of course here's the hopper and, and we'll show you how that works. So let's, uh, oh, and the screw, don't forget the screw, big heavy duty cast screw, which typically would have been you use an ax handle uh, to help tighten it, uh, to really press the juice out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is give everything a good, a good scrubbing. You know, uh, it sits out in the shop and it's all, uh, it gets kind of dirty and dusty. And this is going to be, you know, in our using our food, you know, basically all the juice, we don't buy juice because we'll, we'll do enough here to last us all through the winter, but we don't want any of that in the, in the juice. Boy, speaking of nice, have you seen these things? I don't know where you buy them, where you get them. I mean, I'm so tired. Have you, are you as tired as I am of the low quality hoses and low quality uh, nozzles and shutoffs that just you buy and buy and buy at Home Depot, Lowe's or whatever, and then they break? I found these. I ordered them through the, I think through the Forest Service, FSS or the General Supply. Boy, I wish I had a link to them. Maybe someone knows where they're at. Look at these shutoffs. This is solid brass right there. That weighs, I don't know what it weighs. It weighs a lot. It's, it's heavy duty. Look at this. It's got a spring inside that holds tension against the nylon. I mean, they're just, they couldn't be better. They could not be higher quality. And they are nice. Well, if you want a shutoff that you won't have to buy any more, they are the business. And look at these. These are also for a service, USA made. Again, heavy, twice as heavy. You can run over these with a car and they won't break. Solid brass, but you get that combination right there on the end of a, a USA made rubber hose. You look after it, keep it out of the sun, you don't leave it out all the time. That'll be the last hose you buy for a long time and it won't leak on you. I just use a simple green Dawn, whatever you have. 
get all that dust off there, clean everything up. You know, I cover the, before I put it away, I coat it in a combination of linseed oil and, and beeswax to preserve it. But, you know, the dust settles on it, so it just takes a little bit there. If you guys come across an apple press like this, even if it needs work uh, for a good price, snatch it up. These things are so expensive and they're becoming so rare. I have seen apple presses in worse shape, way worse shape than this one. Not near as nice of design either uh, for over a thousand dollars. I've seen them uh, restored uh, over fifteen hundred dollars for one of these and they're, they're hard to come by. Fortunately, there's some companies uh, that are making all of the components, good quality too, good, good grinders and weighted flywheel, good hardware with plans that you can build your own and you can do that for a lot, save a lot of money, but boy, keep your eye open for them if you can find one, because they are, uh, they're quite a treasure. So here are a few more of the components to the press. So this right here is the tray, the catchment tray, which holds the barrels what the juice goes into. And then I've drilled a hole here and this is where it will run out and we'll catch it. Now, when I, bu when I built this, I used some oak flooring, some scraps. Everything that I used to build was, was scraps and it was dry. You can see there, it was a solid oak flooring. Um, the problem is, is when it gets wet, it expands. And when it expands, it started to develop some, some cracks. And so every time when I first use it, not all the juice wants to go out of the hole. Sometimes it goes out the cracks and it spills a little bit. But what I have found, uh, you know, I thought about food grade silicone or even making some sort of a fiberglass tray for it. I don't worry too much. What I've found works good is I just uh, wet it down, fill it full of water for a while. It'll swell up the wood in about 15, 10, 15 minutes and it'll stop leaking. So you can see some of the water is escaping out in the crack right there. I'll let the hose run on it just a little bit, swell that wood up until it stops. So now we can put the screw in. Now, since the screw is going to be right over top of the press barrel, it's gonna go into the juice, and we wanna lubricate this because there's tremendous force on it. We don't wanna use grease or oil because anything we use on there is gonna fall right down in our, in our juice, right? So I just take some butter. Uh, you can use butter or you can use lard or anything that's food grade and lubricate this screw. On the big presses, the old presses where they used uh, threaded wooden, actually made these big press uh, dowels that had uh, th hand carved threads, wood threads in there, these big screw jacks, and they used uh, lard. They used hog lard around there, and that, that worked good. I don't have any, but I do have some butter. I'm a very happy heart racer down here. I was hoping to get a little residual. But now that will. That will lubricate in there really nice. We want to make sure and rinse it out, you know, because butter will go rancid on us. But uh, we're ready to press, so that's, that's a great lubricant. Now we can put the catchment tray in it. One thing I did wrong when I originally built this, this is all mortised and tendon. It's all done by hand the old way, is I uh, put this, I cut my mortise, chopped my mortise on the wrong side of my mark, and it put this crossbar too low, and so the tray wouldn't tilt. <laughs> it was tilting the wrong direction. So my fix for it was, as I built these, it would have been, it would have been easier to change the, the built, to redo the wood, but I built these uh, adjustable stainless steel legs on there that I could adjust to compensate for that. So it actually, it's turned out really good. It's a, uh, I haven't told anyone that I'd made that mistake before, but uh, it does look like it was very custom, but it was basically covering for a, a mistake. So here you can see what I did wrong. This was supposed to have been up there, because <laughs> that needs to, needs to slightly tilt and drain towards that hole there. Now we can put the two pallets in. This one was the original one. It was still in good enough shape where I could kind of nail it back together with the original wood, but I, kind of, I used that as a pattern. Uh, and the, but the f other one was, it was too far gone, but I built this one out of the same uh, oak, the solid oak straps, and I just glued it um, with a waterproof glue instead of the nails, but they essentially do the same thing. Next are the two barrels. The barrels are, they were completely shot as well. They were, and I made these as well out of the oak um, the old oak flooring and just kept the original bands and painted them 
and put stainless steel screws in there. But there you can see, now we can slide everything out and it's got a bottom on it. When, we, when, we want to, when we're done pressing, we can take that to the compost pile. Beaver's Workshop is the winner of guessing how many apples are in the back of my truck. Good job. Congratulations. There's your honorable mention. Don't forget to like and comment, subscribe if you enjoyed these videos. More apple pressing, firewood cutting. Man, we are busy on the homestead. Fall is a busy time. So we'll see you guys on the next video.